All right, welcome to episode of Real Talk. Today we got Tanil, the YouTube Yo. prodigy. How uh, you I'm good, man. Just trying to keep my my head, my mental, my mental game strong. You know, trying to focus on that. So I've been trying to, you know, make sure my mental state is, you know, good. That's how I'm really feeling. What do you do? What do you be doing? Like yoga? You meditating? Like I'll make sure to, you know, try to keep as much like negative, like like yeah, I I know the world right now, the world, especially the world right now, is full of like, negative stuff, like a lot of stuff's happening and positive stuff too. So I just make sure to like keep my mind focused and you know, whatever I you know, like I'll sometimes I'll just sit there in my room, not only meditate, but I'll just think to myself, I'd like take a lot of time to think and deep thought. So I try to get my mental game strong because it's really easy for you to get discouraged. So I try to make sure to, you know keep my mental on like behind it at all times. I try my best. Mm. Yo, man. Yo, I be seeing every other day it's a new video, man. Like, where does the grind come from? Where's the work ethic? Work. The work ethic, to me, it, to me, the work ethic is, even though I'm not where I want to be, I mean, I am where I want to be right now, but like, I'm not comfortable. Like, work ethic comes from me not being comfortable. Like, I try my best not to feel comfortable because when comfortable becomes laziness. That's my, my big, I try not to feel comfortable with anything. So, like, I started making videos in my basement. Even such, a, even such like, a small transition from, like, my basement to my bedroom making videos is, like, what makes me even grind even harder because, like, I was just making videos in my basement, like, last week, and now I'm in my room. Keep mic set up, everything. Like, even though something as small as that, like, it still shows you, like, hard work does pay off in some way, so... Mm. Nah, that's 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 a friendly fact, bro. That's something I live by. That, like the the comfort zone is where dreams go to die. And that's a perfect spinoff, cause man, can you tell me the importance of being a black creator, especially? Hold on, it's like a two part question. A black creator, when? You have to put so much work into something when the system is made to literally kill uh, any effort to advance, like Section 8, food yeah. stamps. Like, yeah. these are all things to promote comfort and destabilize, like, movement. Yeah, for you. So just yeah. tell me, like, just tell me, like, how do you, how do you just navigate, how do you navigate through all the shit that's going in the world? How I navigate? So like, I have a, so I have multiple ways that I make sure I keep, make my, I stay on track. So like, I have, I have a notebook actually for stuff that I write down, just like plans, goals for the month, stuff like that. Or I just keep a mental note stuff like that, things I want to get accomplished, things I want to get accomplished next week, things I want to get accomplished in the next couple of years. But I just make sure that I always have, like, my mind focused on, at the end of the day, even though the journey is the best part, I still have an end goal that I'm going to reach, so I need to, you know, like, I never forget, like, I always have that back in my mind that one day I have to hit a million before I die, one day. Even if it's not, even if it's tomorrow or a couple of years from now, I got to hit that. So when I see, like, people around me, like, not, like, not specifically people around me, but like, you see, look in the world, you see people getting comfortable, like, they don't really, like, like, for me, like, stagnation is, like, the worst thing I ever want to go through. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm not progressing. Mm -hmm. So even if it's something small, like, even if I gain one subscriber, like, I put out a video, even if it doesn't do well, like, there's some type of progression there. Like, I add one more video to my collection, or I gain one more person who's watching my videos. It's just, like, to me, like, stagnation is, like, I'm trying to avoid, even if I'm going down. Even if I'm going down or <laughs> going up, like, I'd rather, I'd rather not just be at that one point. Yeah. Like, when I'm going down, I have to understand, like, what am I doing wrong? Well, if I'm not growing at all, it's like, I can try this, I can try that, or I can't try none at all, because I don't know why I'm not, like, I'm putting out videos, but if I'm not going up, I'm not going down, like, what I need to do. So it's like, I try my best mm -hmm. to make sure, like, I'm not stagnant. If that's, a, yeah. Mm, that's what, what? What are some, what are some, well, what are some, what's like, Not like an end goal, but what are some major milestones? That's 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 what it is. Just like 
major milestones as in like my entire career, all that, or just like YouTube? You want to keep it? Uh, yeah, let's 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 hear both. But I want to hear the career first. Career first. So eventually, I want to become a Twitch partner for say you know live stream on Twitch. I want to become a Twitch partner eventually. Huh? What's that? A Twitch partner is basically when you is the criteria that you like meet in order for you to become like a, it's different levels to, like streaming like on Twitch. There's your regular Twitch streamer. There's an affiliate, and then there's partner. Partner is like the top like Twitch partner is like most people who have like big audiences are like Twitch partners like the ninjas and those are Twitch partners are verified mm -hmm. on Twitch. That's a big goal of mine. You know, eventually I want to get there. YouTube partner, of course. Why wouldn't I want to be a YouTube partner? I also want to eventually eventually start up a podcast with me and my friends eventually mm. and then i want to also attend um youtube black this convention that youtube like just exclusively for youtube black content creator i want to go there so bad also vidcon there's a, there's a lot of like i just want once i get big my main goal is to just interact with my audience like i want to do that like i don't just i don't understand how people will get big and forget about who brought them up that's my main thing like if i'm ever like like, I'm not going to be, like, that type of person who, once they get big, you forget about where you come from. I need to be where I came from all the times. Like, that's, like, one of my career goals, to be able to come back and, you know, still inspire. I want to be an inspiration to people. Like, that's what I really want to be. Like, I want to inspire people to take up their goals and their passions. Like, I didn't think I get – I never thought I had 1,000 subscribers, to be honest. Even though it's 1,000 subscribers, I never thought it. I was making videos in my basement off my PS4 just for fun. So – I just want to be like, I want to be like that beacon that like shows people that you can take your hobbies to the next level. So that's my, that's my main career goal. Mm. How'd you get started with YouTube? Oh, you want to get back to the grit, nitty and gritty, nitty and gritty. All right. So how I started YouTube, it was off of my old, very old, dusty computer. It's still downstairs in the basement. I don't really use it. I used to post like clips not like clips but i suppose like video like video gameplay of like me playing like old games like mario kart 64 like that all this editor i forgot what the editing software was but i used to post those they had no commentary because i had no mic so like it was just me playing the game then eventually from there i was like yo i got a ps4 i can record and stream off my ps4 and edit it so i would use like the inbuilt i use like the built um streaming functionality off my ps4 and like i upload clips like fortnite like nard something like that eventually i was like yo Instead of doing it on my phone, I started doing it on my PS4. I could eventually start doing it on my phone. And then a couple months later, I come start making videos on my phone. And so people start liking them. People start coming up to me in public, like, oh, yeah, I like your videos. But that, that's what really gave me, like, the drive. Like, yo, I have to really take it to the next level. Because people would tell me, like, oh, yeah, I like your video. Yeah, you're funny. Oh, yeah, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. Like, that's what really, like, fueled me. Like, once people outside of, like, my friend group were, like, Telling me, come up to me, like, oh, yeah, you should do this, you should do that. Oh, yeah, I heard your YouTube channel. Like, even teachers were like, oh, you have a YouTube channel? I was like, yeah. And I was like, how do you know that? And like, oh, somebody told me, like, that's crazy. Like, and these weren't, these weren't people in my immediate circle either. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't go around, like, oh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It was like, I kept it under the wraps. But then, like, as I started to like, grow a little bit, more people started sharing it, more people started liking it, more people started showing their friends. Uh, mm. uh, then, you know, got to where I am now. So I came up from the base, literally from my, I literally, I literally was trapping on my basement, making videos. <laughs> I had, I said, you look, if you go back to my old videos, you still see me with the insulation on the roof and the background on the, my chair. I didn't even have a chair. I had, this is before I had this chair. I had like a stool. And I was sitting there in the stool playing the game while I was just talking and had my little earpieces in. And it was just, that's where it came from. Now I'm in my bedroom. So. Moving up in life, man. Exactly, man. Yo, know, what's the, what's the next stage for what's 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 like your official handle or you just go you just go go by your name your name's your youtube name oh i just go by either neils neils yt i just i usually like if it's a platform or the name neils whoever has the name neils will take it i'll go like neils yt or neils or like i just have my name for like my twitter so like, not my twitter from like my instagram so like i just usually like mostly it's neils like if you want to find me anything it's neils but like i sometimes like deviate from neil and probably like play to neil or like my name so that's what I usually do. But that my main handle is Mules. Mm. Yeah. Yo, Q, ah, Q, what are some, what are some like non, like monetary, like non-traditional goals? Like for just, for example, like my, 
one of my non-traditional goals is like, uh, like walking down the street and like a little kid comes up to me and asks like, take a picture. That's one of them. That's one of them. One of those non-traditional like monetary like for me like if for me it was never about the money like like to this day even if I mm-hmm. like it was never gonna be about the money it never is there's no way the person I am I never did it for the money I just did it because like you know me and my friends and our little inner circles like yo we start making videos I'm like okay but definitely seeing people like meet me out like my biggest one will be if I go out of Poughkeepsie right and I'm walking on the street I'm like I'm like another state and somebody comes up to me like oh aren't you the person to make videos I I almost lost my mind. Lamar, let me tell you. I went to Arlington's football game one time. A person came up to me, was like, oh, yeah, aren't you the person that YouTube videos? I almost lost my mind. I almost <laughs> lost my mind. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Even though it, Arlington is, like, right there, the fact that is, I can go out of my school, like, like, my little, like, my little area, and people was, like, come, someone recognize me in, like, the surrounding area. That's kind of cool. So, like, if I were to go to a different state, and somebody's like, oh, yeah, aren't you the person that make videos? That's that's the biggest like that's the end all be all like that's like one of my like I might put that on the wall like that's crazy definitely mm-hmm. one of those and uh, speak when I hear a lot of horror stories on YouTube well not on you but about YouTube and that's honestly why I was like frowning away from it yeah. Yeah. I was like, uh, I don't know, man. This this video striking? Oh, I don't know, man. I, I, I seen it. I don't know. But yeah, you two just share share any horror horror stories that you've had. Horror stories? Oh, yeah. Just my recent upload. Um, a little reaction video. Anime. Yo, them anime companies don't play at all when it comes to their content, boy. I had a little bit. I had the audio about, like, 40%. Out of like 150, I got striked for not only strike, but they blocked it from being played. So I was like, all right, I got a video. I, I was like on grind time. So it was like seven o'clock. I was like, yo, the video was coming at eight o'clock. I was like, okay, what do I do? So like I re-uploaded it, and I think like, before I re-uploaded, I, I tweaked the, the um the audio so like it would go. I basically lowered the volume of the audio of the actual video that I was reacting to. So I lowered it down a little bit, like a like a good by a good amount. To make sure that you know because a lot of content like reactors do that i'm not a reaction channel but like, i do react to some videos like that that people will tell me to react to because you know i'm not going to say no to a submit if somebody wants to do something i'm gonna do it so i just turned it down a little bit and like it didn't really block me but like it blocked me in like only one country which is japan i was like okay i can deal with that so youtube it's very finicky when you're using other people's stuff or like music so that's like my biggest gripe is like if you're gonna do something make sure you go with like a instrumental or like if it's like an instrumental and like turn it down a little bit don't have it like booming in the background because if it sounds vaguely familiar to the actual like song like crazy delete to the song that they will like either put a not only really strike but they'll like claim it which basically means that they can run ads on your video and they'll take all the profit so it's either it's like there's clock there's claims and then there's strikes claims are okay if you're but if you're only if you're making like good big money on youtube and videos are like your primary source of income then a claim could be devastating like a claim could be no bueno but a strike you yeah luckily i haven't really gotten any copyright strikes but most of my videos i make are just of me so mm, damn see that that just sounds it, it's it's crazy because like when when you really think about it it's like in this day and age it's like you're really like a broadcaster like your cnn your abc like that's really what it could be and then even like imagine i, I just like right right before this i've seen uh it was a post and it was like imagine if like <laughs> hitler was in this time and they like he had his own like U- youtube channel and then he, he could make whatever he wanted yeah and just like the responsibility of being a content creator and can you just speak on the ways that you know because even with myself sometimes i have to check myself and it's like okay you know let me cut that part of the video out because that's not very responsible yeah to be putting out in the world 
Yeah. So like, how do you manage with that? What's with, with like that? So when it comes to like my audience stuff like that, I try, I try to be more, like, like if I think something in my head, I try to be like, because people are gonna be watching regardless of like, you don't know who's watching. Like you can't just go on video and say blase blah view this video. Like you don't know who's watching your videos once you put them out. That's just how it is. So if you're one, if this one video blows up and you have you portray a certain image of yourself, then no matter what you do, even if you delete the video, those thousand people who saw the video, those don't change. They still saw your video. So I try to make sure that I convey like the right, like the like morally like right, like how I feel. Like there's some subjects on YouTube that don't talk about because like even if like it's very controversial, I would say to, I tend to stay away from very controversial topics because like it can be very heated really fast. I don't really need to bring that attention to my channel. So mm, I like try to what? make sure. Huh? Like what? Like the stuff that it's like talking about, like for instance, like something as small as like PS4 versus Xbox. Like a lot of people, like it could be very like controversial. Like, oh, I like Xbox. I don't need that, like, the, you know, negative attention. Because when you bring controversy, when you do, like, con and people are going to be attacking each other in the comments. I don't got time for that. Like, for instance, like I posted one video on TikTok. It, like, literally, it was a thousand people arguing in the comments over, like, just over anime characters who can be who. So even if it's something as small as that, like, that shows how, like, even if it's something as trivial as, oh, Blah, blah, blah can be blah, blah, blah. That a real hot issue, then I just kind of stay away from that. So even if I, for instance, like Black Lives Matter, I support that with my whole heart. Like, I'm like, you're going to know. So, and it's my job as a content creator to, you know, speak up. Like, if something's wrong, going wrong in the world, like, you're, you need to speak up. Like, you have a platform. Even if you have 10 subscribers, 100, 1,000, 1 million, you still have people watching your videos, people on a daily, people like your videos, people subscribe to you for a reason. So I make sure to, if there's something wrong going on in the world, I'm gonna say something about it, so. Mm. What, are, what, are, what are your what are your taboos? What are your no-nos? On um, what, YouTube? Yeah. For me, um, as a YouTuber, I tend to stay away from like clickbait. I really don't like clickbait. It's mm -hmm. really, like even though like, for me, clickbait is, I try to stay away from it. Like, you know, people who have, like, these videos where they're like, oh, I stole blah, blah, blah from the store, blah, blah, blah. Like, for me, it's like, you're not telling the truth. Like, I want my videos to be truthful. Like, if I, like, if you click on this video, you're clicking on this video for a reason. Like, you see the title, you see the description, you see the thumbnail. You know what you're coming here for. Like, that's like me making a video of, oh, I, I purchased four Lambos knowing, dang well, I don't have four Lambos and they're just, I'm just gonna be out, me outside of the Honda. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if you're gonna have a video, like, people come, like, thumbnails and stuff like that are very important. Don't get me wrong. Like, people, like, that's the first thing that people see when they click on your channel if they're not natively subscribed to your channel. Like, when you're going down your YouTube subscription feed or your YouTube um, suggested feed, thumbnails are the first thing you see with the title. Mostly the thumbnails. So there's a lot of art and, like, meticulous craft put into making thumbnails. So I kind of learned, like, yo, even though I don't have a, a killer PC set up, I'm going to try to compete as much as I can to, you know, grab people's attention. But there's different ways to grab people's attention. But I try to grab people's attention with, like, the truth. Like, if I'm doing a reaction video to a certain thing, then I'm going to be doing a reaction video to that thing. If I'm doing a Try Not To Laugh challenge, or I'm doing a video with somebody else, you're coming here for that. So I try not to do, like, lies and clickbait. Because that really, like, it's just a pet peeve of mine when I go on the channel and they have, like, a video that's not the truth. So it's just like, why would you post that? It's not even, like, it's not even the truth. Like, so I just try to make sure that. That's like my number one tab. Like I, but never, never, never. Mm. What's um for? Well, for the people that are this far in, that are in super invested in you at this point, it's uh <clears throat> oh shit. Hold on, hold on. Uh, you good now? Yeah. For for the people that are still watching. What wakes you up in the morning? What wakes me up in the morning? Mm -hmm. What makes you up in the morning is that the journey isn't over. Like, 
there's still a lot more to be done in life just like outside of like a youtube perspective like like for me like i want to live the fullest life that i can so like just sitting around like for me when i don't have a productive day that really like, kills me because like i'll like whenever i sit down at the end of the day i always have like, a reflection of what i've done in the entire day and if i don't feel like i've accomplished enough i'm just like wow like what did you do all day you had 24 hours like what did you do so i try to like the grind i'm always on grind mode 24 7 like even even if it's even if it's just updating or posting a tweet i'm always doing something like even if it's tweeting something retweeting something like i'm always doing something there's never a moment where i'm just like not doing nothing because there's no point in doing nothing because to me if i've done all these videos 70 something 70 plus videos now instagram everything everybody knows if whoever's on my social media they know that i have a youtube channel like it, if you don't know then like that's crazy i post every five seconds so i try to because people spend time watching my channel people spend time out of their life they will never get back and i spent time in my life that i will never get back making videos and editing and like staying up at night editing all that stuff so that's like my biggest like you spent all this time don't waste your energy and effort and kill this dream that you have by doing nothing. So that's why I usually wake up in the morning and mine's just my first go-to. Mm. How many, um, how, how much watch time do you have? Of all time or just like this month? Yeah, yeah, it's like all time. I don't even know. To be honest. I, I forgot. About a thousand hours? A thousand hours, probably all, probably lifetime, but this month, no, nah, not a thousand hours because a thousand watch hours is a that's a good amount. Uh, what am I gonna say? I don't really pay attention. I pay attention to watch time, but for me, it's like, yeah, monetization is gonna all, but like, I just usually just make the videos and make videos. It's fun to me to make videos, so I try not to focus on money because when you focus on like the medium to your like, we focus on the medium to your end goal, kind of takes away the fun from you know making videos and meeting other people. Cause I've met so many people off of YouTube that I would never have met unless I started doing this YouTube channel stuff and Twitch stream stuff. I've met so many people. I've gotten close to so many people just off making YouTube videos. So like to me, it's like if I did just focus on like the potential money or outcome or like, of course I take into my statistics. So like that's a, that's a given. Like, you have to. But I don't harp on them to me. Like if a video does bad, I'm just like, eh, make another one. Hopefully it does good. Hopefully it does better. So I just have to keep that mindset. So I don't really like, like people will harp on like watch times like that. So I try not to. Like, I'll look at it. Okay, I do this. I need to do that, and then keep it pushing. Mm. Okay. So when so when you're cranking out a video, uh, is is that a goal or have how ugh, how have you been cranking out like a video every day? Not every day. Mostly. I I usually I rarely do back to back uploads. I only I just post it on Snap. I was like, yo, should I do back to back upload? People are like, yeah. So I just do that. I don't really post a video every day. Mm. To me, it gets tiring. Unless you're like a very big YouTuber who have like an audience who will sit there and watch every day. Because it's gonna take a lot of time for you to get people to watch your channel every day. And I don't wanna have like I don't wanna oversaturate my channel and burn out when I post videos every day. So I make sure I give myself enough time to like creatively think and have like unique, not only unique, but like creative video ideas that I know what I would watch. So I try not to just put out a video, just put out a video. Cause I know if I put out a video every day, it's not gonna be more of a quality aspect, but more of like quantity. Mm. So I try to, you know, like probably mostly once a week, if not maybe twice. So. How do you, um, with even like once, one, once a week, how do you, how do you measure yourself being productive versus you just keeping yourself busy productive to me when you keep yourself busy you don't really have a goal of just doing something you just doing it just to do it trying to do it usually when you keep in some keep yourself busy you're just doing it to pass the time like i'll keep myself busy when i know i'm about to get you to leave to go to the house and my mom's getting dressed okay so i'm just keep myself busy until she's ready to go that's the type of keeping busy when i'm being productive it could be something as mundane as just updating my YouTube, updating my YouTube bio or my Twitter bio or my Instagram bio, something like that. Like, even though it's something as small as that, everything has a purpose because you never know who may stumble upon your channel or your YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, whatever. You never know who might stumble upon it. And your life can change like that. Off of one video, your life can change like that. 
So you always have to be prepared. Like you always have to be like prepared on every platform to just, you know, have that, you know, just in case something does happen, you're ready. So I try to, it could be something as small as, like I said earlier, just like tweeting something out or just like updating a YouTube, YouTube description that I didn't get around to updating. It just has a goal. Cause like, like I said, like five seconds ago, you never know who's watching your video. Like I have videos from like a year ago that people will still watch. So you never know who's clicking the little tab to go look in your description. And if your description is outdated, then you just lost a person who would have added you on Instagram or followed you on Twitter. So I try to keep everything, keep it something as small as that, just up to date. Damn. Well, uh, who, who are, who are your, who are your YouTube OGs? What are the inspirations? Yeah. Inspirations. Uh, one of them, Etika, rest in peace to him. He's dead. He passed away like last June. That hit me really hard. You know, that was definitely one of my biggest, like, if I had to pick two people, it would probably be him and Kobani Body 456, 456, my bad. He, Kobani Body 456 was a Let's Play channel. He's the one who first put me on to, like, yo, maybe I can make YouTube videos. Because I was watching his videos every day. Like, literally every day. I was a fiend at, like, 2010 for this guy. Like, and he stopped making videos a couple years ago because, you know, mental health like that. He wanted to keep himself checked. And then Etika and him were friends. So when Etika died, I know he'd probably hit him hard so he didn't want to make videos. But Etika and him, like, those are my, like, I have to meet at least Kabana Body before I die. Like, that's my, my opium. Like, that was really, like, the inspiration for me to even get on. That, that put the thought in my head to get on this platform. Like, because before, I, I wanted to be a Let's Play channel. And I was like, oh, I'm playing games like that. Uh, uh, but I didn't have a PC. So I was like, I can't do that yet. I don't have a PC and stuff like that for me to make a Let's Play channel. I don't have a mic. So I was like, yo, Etika makes live videos of himself talking about issues. And like sometimes he does streams where he plays games. I was like, okay. So I was like, yo, these two guys who are friends are doing two of the same, two kind of different things, but they're still cool with each other. And I kind of like meshed those two together and that became like my kind of style. Cause those, but those are definitely my two inspirations on YouTube. If I had to name two people, definitely him. Both of them, my bad. Mm. You know, what's pretty sure the access for what's like what's the end goal with not just YouTube because YouTube could just you know because like some people like branch off from YouTube and they yeah. get acting and then all that but funny thing I was watching um and I gotta send send this to you but um it's uh Joe Rogan interviewed um, Andrew Schultz. Mm. He was basically saying like how the way that everything is set up, YouTube is gonna be the dominating force. Cause like, even right now, like Netflix is like a hundred or, actually no, I, I, it's like two or $10 billion in debt. So they're saying it's going to be like YouTube is going to buy Netflix and then YouTube is just going to be the content hub. Like, yeah, yeah. it's like you get caught in a two minute video and then you just choose to play like a three minute video and then an hour in now you're watching like 40 minute clips and now you're stuck there for like another six when it's like Netflix is kind of, you know, you just watch like a show, you, you know, a movie, and then you're done. Yeah. So with that, with that added knowledge, what, how, 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 how are you using YouTube for your advantage? Using YouTube for my advantage? That's a question. What do you for my advantage? Yeah. Like what's the, What's the future? What's the pivot plan? The pivot, the pivot plan, the, the or, original. Or, or you just stay on YouTube forever? Oh, no. That, that, I, always, I, always, I always wanted to, like, like YouTube is always going to be my home. Like, that's my first, like, video, first, you know, pop off, everything. Like, that would be YouTube. Like, I don't mind making the videos, but eventually I do want to branch out. You know, to me, like, a lot of, I see a lot of YouTubers nowadays who have to make YouTube videos and they branch out. They do like Twitch streams and they branch out. Some of them will get into like 
acting. Some of them will do like little skits. Some of them will, like, they're branching out. More people, more and more people are branching out. So I kind of want to, you know, follow suit and not just post videos on TikTok. Like people, a lot of content creators now are posting videos on TikTok because TikTok is booming right now. So I started taking that into consideration. Like, yo, there's a lot of other ways to broaden your audience because if you only stay on YouTube, you're limiting yourself because like you're only seeing people who are on YouTube. There's a lot of people in the world who don't have YouTube. A lot of people in the world who don't have TikTok. So when you have all these separate people and groups who like, I just want to kind of like grab them all together and like mesh them. But I still want to have like a presence, not only just on YouTube, but in other places as well. So that's why mm-hmm. I kind of see myself going with YouTube, not just staying on the platform, but of course making videos like that. I'm not going to leave the people who support me on YouTube hanging. Like that'd be, no. But I still want to have like, you know, other social medias where I can like, you know, have a presence on and still like pull them in to like my YouTube, I have YouTube people pull, go onto my Twitter. Like I want everybody to be interacting everywhere. Like I just don't want to have a YouTube channel where only people on YouTube see me and I have a Twitch account where only people on Twitch see me. Like, I want to have interactions everywhere. So that's definitely where I want to go with YouTube. Mm. Yeah. So no like talk show. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Of course. Maybe, Eventually, maybe I want to get into film. What you're thinking. Let's be talking about talk shows. Mm-hmm. I actually wanted to do a talk show when I get like more of an audience or whenever I had this. I really, my main gripe right now is having a PC where I can build and edit and do all these cool stuff on. Cause right now I'm very, like for me, I'm extremely limited with what I can do. Every video that you see me put out on my channel is on my phone, edited with my fingers and posted it with my fingers. I don't have a tripod. I don't have a ring light. I don't have like oh, literally just. Bare trenches, boy. Huh? You're in the trenches. Trenches. Where it's lethal, bro. I'm telling you, like, right now I'm using my lamp. My lamp. So you, my lamp. My oh lamp. My God. I have you stacked on three BS's. Ah, Let me show you something, man. You got to get you. Get you a little panel. Mm. The LEDs, man. Yeah. Like 120. If I do get some, I'm definitely coming to you because you know yourself. When I do get some, eventually. It's actually forever. Yeah. So I've been like, like everything has been from the bare minimum. So like I've learned how to work with my like, like just a phone. Like I make my thumbnails just off my phone. I make, I, I made the description just off my phone. Everything I do Canva? is, well, huh? Do you use Canva? No. My thumbnails? Yeah. What do you use? No, I, I use Superimpose X for the collage and stuff like that, where I add like the, the outer layers and I have like the meshes when I do like the mask with that. I, most of my thumbnails are used through Superimpose X. And then I, if I do add text, it's off Fonto, the app called Fonto. And I just add the text on there and I like, you know, mess around with text, make a different color, add a drop shadow or like outer layer and I'll call it a day. So like I'm used to this like bouncing. I don't have a computer, I don't. I don't have a lot of things that I could have, but like, you know, I'm still, when you have nothing, not only nothing, but you have a limited amount, you kind of learn how to work with what you have and make the best out of it instead of having a whole bunch of stuff and not knowing what to do with it. So that's kind of the, message, mm-hmm. my, the mindset I live by. So, yeah. Oh yeah. We're, yeah. No, nah, that's, that's, mm-mm. tell you right now, what you just said is truth. There's a little something called gas mm-hmm. and Every creator catches it. It bites you. Some get it soon. Some get it later. But gas is gear acquisition syndrome. Mm. Where you just you just look at a piece of equipment and you're like, damn, bro. I need that. And then you get it. You don't know what to do with it. And then they come out with the new version. In six months, and you're like, ah, oh, I need that one. And then you just get trapped. Yeah. So, bro, as a survivor, as a survivor, don't fall for the trap, bro. Don't fall, don't fall for the smooth commercials. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Just, just off of making this, I just I had to ask my uncle to help me build a PC. All these 
new advanced like I have my PC that I built is you know it's it's good you know it's it's cost budget effective but there's a lot of new stuff that makes it like they make it seem so like I need it like I was I had to like I said like, yo I can't I can't do this right now the stuff that I have is good enough but like I was like yo that webcam looks fine with the ring light oh that looks nice oh that 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 motherboard look hmm I like, I'm try I'd be like you know it's a money like that's four hundred dollars like you can't like chill out. Mm -hmm. so. all, all that X, X, extra RAM, yeah, that screen. That screen is a big screen. That's yeah, new. What, is, so. what does it take to be a YouTuber, man? What does it take? What, what does, does it take? take? I don't know. I get to ask, I get this question asked a lot. Believe it or not. Okay. So, for me, like for my personal experience for being a YouTuber, the main thing is to have fun. Like you need to have fun with your content. If you don't personally enjoy making content, don't do YouTube videos. Don't do it for the hype. Don't do it for the clout. Don't do it. Like I'm telling you, because like a lot of people, like, there's a lot of people who choose, you know, not go the creative route and just like copy the trend. And then when the trend dies, you have no idea what to do because you, because they're not there for you. They're there for the trend. You feel me? Mm. So when you post, when you, all the videos that you post are just all public interviews and stuff like that, it's a trend. Like a lot of people want to see public interviews like that. So if the trend, for instance, say for instance, that's a trend, public interviews. So when that trend is going up, of course you're going to gain that gas and that watch time and those views because that's the trend right now. So, but when the trend dies down, you, you have no idea what videos to make, what to put out because you're so used to just doing those for forever now. And the people who are on your channel don't, aren't here for that you feel me so like for instance like if you're an art channel right and you draw make you do speed art whatever you want to do make animations like that if you post a video of yourself doing a let's play the people who are on your channel aren't there for that and it's subscribe for you to make let's plays so it's kind of like an abrupt like why is he putting out let's plays if you're here for art kind you feel me so you need to have fun and not just focus on one not only that's on one thing but you need to have fun and just have like that's the biggest like I can't gripe that enough because people really would be miserable making YouTube videos just to put them out and then when everybody does good you're like yeah my video did good but when it does bad it just destroyed like so for me if a video if my video can do ten views a hundred a thousand I'm still gonna be I'm still gonna be putting out videos because you know it's just fun for me to make videos so I don't really care about view count like that where I'm like 150 views oh my goodness if I even though I'm at a thousand. Hitting 100 views to me is still going to be, like, the best feeling ever. All the time. Because like, I remember the first time I hit 100 views on YouTube. I remember the first time. I was in gym class, high school. These videos aren't even on my channel anymore because I got mad one day and deleted them all. I had this Dragon Ball Z video I made on my PS4. Right? Let me, my bad. I'm gonna dump me on my PS4, put it, put it, well, post it on YouTube. It had 117 views. I almost lost my mind, Lamar. Almost lost my mind. I said, 100 views? My first 100 views? I was like, oh my goodness. Triple digits, man. Triple digits. So, like, once you hit that, you get that feeling that you just need to keep on doing it. You want that. Once you get that feeling of like hitting a thousand or 100, you want to keep on feeling it. But eventually, one day, you. Hopefully your channel does beautifully. Like I'm not gonna wish nothing bad. If one video doesn't do that, you know, good feeling, then are you gonna stop or are you gonna keep on going? And my philosophy is that regardless of how a video does, it can do 75, it can do 75 million, it can do 75 thousand, it can do 75 playing 75. I'm still gonna put up videos regardless. Mm. So it's just having fun like that and being consistent too, because YouTube likes consistency somewhat. Somewhat consistent. Mm. And what? Oh yeah, one more thing about that. My bad. I'm keep on talking. But don't advertise the channel. And don't advertise the channel if you're not willing to put out content. I've seen this happen so many times. I've seen people post it on Snap. Mind you, I I love new YouTubers. I love putting new YouTube new YouTubers. Like, oh yeah, look at channel. Oh yeah, bet. I'll I'll give you some tips. I can do. Oh, I love it. But when you post it all over your social medias, everything like that, and you only put out two videos and never put out another video after that. To me, it's just like, why, why waste time with that? Why waste time? Because you do all that promotion and, oh, watch my video, uh, blah, 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 making thumbnails, recording the time, putting out the video for you only to put out two and then just give up. 
So definitely be consistent if you're going to do it at all. It's okay to make a video. You know, some people, like, they just make a video every couple months. It's not for them to take it serious. They just do it for fun. That's cool. But if you want to take it, like, to the next, like, level, if you want to be, like, up, like, because most YouTubers, literally, if you see most professional YouTubers, they either put out a video once a day or once every two days. And they can do that because they have editors that they pay. Once they send them the clips, the montage, whatever they send them to them, and just edit it, you know, send it back. That's their job. Edit it, send it back. That's cool for them. But you need to be somewhat consistent. It can be once a week. It can be once every two weeks. It can be once every two to three days. It can be once a month. There's some sort of consistency so that, you know, your viewers know when to come back for another video. Mm. That sounds like something. Are, would, would you be interested in doing, like, does, does, does that, like, make you feel good? Like, doing a video once every day or once every two days? No, I mean, once every two days, it's okay, but I usually like to do, because for me, I record videos in bulk, so like, for, in the household that I live in, video hours that I take to make a video are literally at from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. That's when I make, after, ever since, after since quarantine started, I make videos at 1 to 4 a.m. in the morning, and sometimes I just make, sometimes I get it up, I, be, I have to stay up, I'm like, yo. I don't want to make a video, but I know I have an obligation to people because, you know, whenever I don't make a video for a while, people are going to ask me, when's your next video? Why aren't you posting videos? So I'm like, okay. So then I just like, either I record in bulk for one day when I'm in like the video, because sometimes I'd be in the video mood where like, I just want to post, like, I just want to record like five videos today and just, just edit them all. And sometimes I'm just not in a mood. Like, I just don't feel like getting up to do it, make a video. So like, I just have videos that I just have sitting on just in case, like, you know, something happens where I can't post a video and I always say, yo, I can just upload this because it's already ready. Everything's already ready for that video to be uploaded. I just haven't uploaded it yet. So for me, it's not a everyday thing, but more of like maybe three to four days I record video. Like if I drop for me right now, I drop back to back, so I'm not gonna probably upload for another week or so. So yeah, because it's it's still fun. Like you need to because you do something every day, and it's like it can be like I don't want it to be feel like a job. I don't want it to feel like a job. I want to feel like a hobby that I just like to do, like playing video games. Like, it's fun to me for me to do, and I do get some acknowledgement for it. So, mm. yeah. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> one of my biggest realizations going into like the media world is that it's not all peaches and, and, and creams. And it's like, you know, at face value, you know it's going to be hard, right? Mm -hmm. You know it's going to be hard. But when you really get into it, and it's like, aside from, I think comedy is the hardest thing. Like, st I, I, I think it's stand-up stand -up comedy you have a 99% chance that you are not going to make it. Of course. I believe it. And then right after that, it's media and, like, film and, like, all that, that, like, bubble. So, from that, you just speak on some of, like, the hate that you've received. Oh, the hate? Okay, I can pull on that. So, like, for some videos I'll do... Like reaction video, I can do react. I talk about the reaction videos because like sometimes they're the most used in numbers like that. So the videos, like the reaction videos, most people who come to watch reaction videos, you're coming to see the reaction of me, right? So most people have seen the video already. You're just coming to see somebody react to it. That's usually that's usually what I do. Whenever I like working on reactions, because it's funny to see people, especially from anime and like that, I like to see how they react to certain scenes. Like, yo, this junk is epic. Like, I want to see how you felt when you saw this, right? Mm -hmm. So I've seen people talk about like, oh, for instance, I'm telling this one comment I heard. It was so weird, right? It was like, oh, why are you so, why are you talking so much over the video? <laughs> Mind you, it's a reaction video. So you, I, people in the comments were coming after him too, but I was like, yo, don't, don't do that. That's, that's, not, that's not the wave. So to me, it's just like you, add, you click on this video. I put reaction in all caps, by the way, parentheses and all. So it's not like you came here like you weren't expecting a reaction video. I left the link to the original video in the description, all that. 
But to some people, what is come as stupid stuff, because, like, you came here to hear me talk about a video that I'm watching. So I'm going to assume that you saw the video already. So it'll be stupid stuff like that. I don't really get that much hate, to be honest. Like, I don't really talk about nothing people hate on me. It, to me, it's just like, you watch my videos, you support me or you don't. Like, I'm not going to force you to do it. You just do it. And I really haven't really received that much hate, to be honest, because nobody really, like, there's, like, I, don't, I just haven't, to be honest. In my whole YouTube career, I really haven't. Mm. Just probably like that, the reaction videos, but that's about it. Mm. Yeah, with the, um, just with, like, instances like that and I was like you could plan something and then it just it just doesn't happen at all it actually ends up worse than before you planned it and it's like you just tell me about a time when you were close to quitting or like you thought about quitting like you're just about to just throw in the towel oh, multiple times multiple multiple times I've deleted, I've gotten so mad that I've deleted all my videos at one point. I had a video with like 6,000, I deleted it. I was the worst mistake I've ever made. That video probably could have been like 10K by now. But I don't harp on the past. I'm not a coulda, woulda, shoulda type of person. I did it, I can't bring it back, so it's like that. But there has been very points in time where I just feel like I just don't want to make videos anymore. I just like, I'm just done with it. Like, I just don't, like, it gets me so mad. I was like, like, it's been, the last time I actually felt that was probably like, couple months ago like five or six maybe and I, the videos weren't just, just i wasn't like gaining many subscribers videos weren't doing the videos were doing okay i was like yo i i really just don't want to do this anymore like i there's i'm just i feel like all my efforts are going in vain they're all going no there's no point in me doing all these videos and people watching them so uh, to me it was like I might as well just quit and just like do something else but to me it's like even though i wanted to do it like Something was like it always kept on dragging me back to doing YouTube. Like I don't know what it was. It was I that's why I kind of felt like it could be something more than this because like even though I wanted to quit so hard for like one like one night I was thinking about like yo I really hate YouTube I don't want to do this no more. And the next morning I wake up I'm like okay I make a video, and I was, I realized to myself like yo the intro does say you hated making YouTube videos, and especially with stuff like that like the people around me are also like a very big deciding factor and like that type of stuff too because like I can be at my lowest low like I get ready to delete every single video and I'm and people be like what are you doing I'm like you know you have all this potential you're wasting it ah uh, ah uh, you know people like your videos it doesn't matter how many views you get like people will like really talk sense to me like even though you shouldn't rely on people you know like do what you want to do at the end of the day, it's always good to get encouragement from others and to hear what other people have to say about the stuff that you're doing because at the end of the day my job as a content creator is to entertain people so mm. it's good to hear feedback Who's in your um? Who's in your support system? What's it looking like? Support system. I have. See, I have a very large support system. A very large support system. People I, who I send videos to to share them. Those are like the go-to people who watch videos. Anybody who watches my videos, I consider you to be my best support system. Like even if it's something as small as sharing a video, uh, sharing like a post on Facebook. Like I only have like set people in my in my support system. I do like I have considered people like. You know, Jordan, Treasure, those type of people who I, like always, like from the beginning, from the jump, before I even had like 100 subscribers, they used to share my videos, stuff like that. Like Elijah, they used to share before I actually like, people started knowing who I was. And Tati too. But then as like I grew a little bit, like I started like meeting other people when I like, started wanting to do YouTube channels. And we started just like supporting each other. Because most of my support systems come from me supporting people and then they support me. You feel me? Because I my biggest philosophy is that you can't expect to get if you don't you can't expect to get if you don't give. Like, what you put out into the world is what you're going to get back. So if I'm always supporting people, I'm always being positive. Like, like to be honest, if you, you have to say something bad about me. You have to be, you have to really dig for that. Because, like, <laughs> you have to dig for that really hard. Because, like, all I do is support people. I put, I'm always posting somebody's, somebody's stuff. I'm always helping people. People, like, I'm never going to turn somebody away. Like, if you ask me for tips on YouTube, even if I text back, like, an hour later, if I'm doing something, I'm still going to respond to you. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, there was a point in time where I wasn't, I didn't have a thousand subscribers. I had zero. The point in time where I had 15. It's a point in time where I had 20. And it's crazy to me because the biggest thing in my brain was like, at the same time, there were these big YouTubers like 2 Pie, Markiplier, uh, KSI. At the same time, they were also were at that point too. They didn't have a thousand subscribers at one point. They didn't have a million at one point. They had 25, 26. They, they had these numbers, right? So it shows that like, even though 
we all start because every YouTube channel you start from zero, regardless if you make videos or not. Like you can make videos and still be at zero subscribers. But everybody starts from that zero. So that was really like that big, like, yo. I start from zero, people are helping me, like, my videos aren't even good, Lamar. I tell you my videos were dirty <laughs> compared to what they are now. Even though my videos now I make the best what I have off the editing software on iPhone, they were dirt. And people are still supporting me. So it just shows that like even though it's not the best quality, not the best product, people still support you because they love you as a person. So they're gonna support you what you do. So as I started to make better connections with other people who decide to take their life to the next level by pursuing goals and stuff like that, it's like that support became mutual. So I support you, you support me. Just started branching out from there. So that's basically my support system. It's people who I support and they support me too. Mm. Uh, see, that's it, man. Shout out. Uh, uh, you have any last remarks for the for the viewers that are like fifty minutes deep? Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting me and Lamar. Check out all his stuff. You already know where his stuff is. My boy Went. Mm. Drop your socials. Drop, Drop social coach socials youtube.com slash neils n-e-i-l-l-s twitter's neils y-t facebook you find me by my name to neil carly instagram to neil t-e-h-n-e-i-l-l and yeah that's about it so for my socials mm. and that's it for this episode of real talk thank you for tuning in